I started work a long time ago in 1969 for the Rio Tinto Zinc Corporation and I was uh, marketing uranium. An interesting job at that time. But I feel very fortunate. I've had three phases to my life. Firstly, in the corporate world, and I rose to be chief executive of a FTSE company, uh, which was Redland Building Materials all around the world. Then I made a very interesting change. I moved to the World Wildlife Fund and had eight wonderful years running that. I have to tell you a story. When I arrived, they uh, were a bit suspicious of me. And the then Peter Brockholm of the Daily Telegraph said, putting Robert in charge of WWF is like putting King Herod in charge of a crash. So it was quite interesting first day when I arrived and I then had a great eight years uh, working at WWF both in the UK and globally and then for the last six years I've uh, been involved firstly with English Partnerships and for the last five years with this great organisation uh, uh, the HCA where I've been chairman for that period. It's been a great privilege to have that job and I feel very fortunate, very privileged to have such an interesting career to date. Probably if we go back to WWF, when I arrived there, uh, it, um, there were some wonderful people, but they were rather lacking direction. Uh, and I was sort of brought on as, as a businessman to sort of put some business discipline into the organisation. What was really interesting was, uh, people came to see me, I thought, oh, they're going to hate me sort of putting in normal sort of procedures of delegation and accountability and so on. But actually, they welcomed it. This fellow, who was one of the brightest in the organisation, he said, Robert, I'm so glad I'm now going to be set targets because I know I'm going to achieve them and you'll tell me well done. I said, absolutely. Uh, and it really wasn't difficult to change that organisation to being much more effective. It's a charity, but there's no reason why it can't be a, a, a properly run and effective. Uh, and uh, with the people there who are very inspirational, they, they, they responded well to, to that sort of leadership. At the HCA, the one thing I particularly enjoyed doing and found it uh, equally challenging, however, was with the Pathfinders, the HMR areas, where I think I'm the only person in the universe who actually visited all 14 of them, everywhere from the west coast of Cumbria to Stoke, uh, to Middlesbrough, to inner Liverpool, and so on. And I particularly remember, for example, in West Hull, there's a street there called uh, Early Street, which is just people living in these shocking conditions. The good news is, of course, what we've been doing about them, in particular, working with local communities. What do they want? What changes do they want to take place? So I was sort of in Stoke the other day and saw a fantastic sort of regeneration of an area that previously had been very deprived. And it lifts the whole community, of course, and it's all in line with what the community themselves wanted. Our regeneration efforts, I think, are um, something we can be very proud of. I could take you to a corner of Hanover Square in London, I could literally, it's, well, by definition the corner is still there, uh, when I think I was 30 and I'd just been appointed group treasurer of Fison's, which was then the equivalent of a FTSE company. And I suddenly realised I'd sort of crossed the river from being uh, sort of an employee to being actually part of, of management, as well as obviously being an employee, but I'd sort of joined the management ranks. You could no longer blame them because you were part of them, and that was quite a, a significant moment in one's own appreciation of uh, that one was sort of climbing up the, uh, the career ladder, and that uh, that was an important change of, of and thus acceptance of responsibility. Uh, and uh, I always remember that moment. Listen to others, take advice, but trust your own judgment and be decisive. And so that's what I think and have confidence in that, having listened to other people's point of view. My first boss going back to Rio Tinto in the late 60s was a Dutchman. Uh, and he taught me two things. One was we did a lot of traveling. He taught me how to be last on and first off an aeroplane, which is always quite helpful. Uh, and secondly, and more importantly, he taught me to do one's homework. I, I could again take you to the spot in Tokyo we were in a taxi on the way to negotiation and he was testing me on our negotiating position and I felt I'd not really done my homework and I didn't have it in my mind and that has never happened again. So a little lesson there, don't, don't sort of wing it, do your homework. What are the key qualities of leadership? Firstly, you've got to be yourself, you cannot be somebody else. Uh, been quite demanding. I have been called forensic by some people, particularly those who have suffered at the, in our investment committee. Uh, but I, com I combined that with, I, I hope, decisiveness uh, coming out of that uh, uh, challenge, and then great support. Um, if that's what you want to do, fine, let's uh, get on and do it. Uh, and uh, willingness to, to delegate, well, not just willingness to delegate, 
really push delegation. Clarity, trust and delegation. Let this work through the organisation. It has to stop at start at the top and say well done. People like being told they've done a good job. Say well done. So you can c combine all that but nonetheless being quite uh, demanding. I, I find people respond to that. A phrase I'd use is quiet confidence. People respond to a manager or a leader uh, who doesn't show off, doesn't brag, uh, but is quietly confident. And that sort of confidence, I think, can inspire a team. Um, I think it's a role of a chairman, actually. To, a chairman must never panic. If you see the chairman panicking, it's very bad news. <laughs> Whatever's, whatever happened, what's gone wrong, uh, the chairman should always be that calm voice. And I think that applies down the ranks. Uh, people don't want to think that uh, there are issues that, aren't, that can't be dealt with. So, quiet confidence. There's nothing more important than your family and your health. I've uh, been married for, 30, I better get this right now, 35 years. Uh, got a daughter and recently acquired a granddaughter. And my weekend uh, unpaid work is work my wife and I do in Zambia where we run our charity, which my wife, uh, she was actually uh, working in Zambia in the 1970s. Uh, I say my, heart, my heart's in Scotland and hers is in, in, in Zambia, so we meet in London. Uh, and uh, we raise amazingly quite a lot of money in the UK. We don't have any paid staff, and we send that out to help through a local charity in Zambia, very isolated rural communities, help them get a first step on the ladder of life. I shall be there again in a couple of weeks' time. I love nature at its most natural and its most beautiful. Um, smell the flowers, listen to the birds. Even in January, we, my wife walks, uh, we walk around the garden. It's amazing what colour you can see in a garden in January. It is quite amazing. Never mind, obviously, in the summer, it's absolutely one. I was looking last night that there were sort of three trees standing behind each other, and just that they, the sun shining, they're all slightly different colours of green. Just fabulous to look at. So tre treasure those glories, because they're very real, very special. So it's not the individual. What piece of music would I take with me? Firstly, if I was asked to choose eight pieces, I think they would all have the human voice in them. I think if you're a desert island, you'd want the human voice. But the one I'm going to suggest uh, today doesn't actually have the human voice in it. It would be the pipes and drums of uh, probably the Black Watch, the regiment my family was involved in, and in particular playing Highland Cathedral, that wonderful uh, uh, tune, uh, which five years ago was blasted out on pipes and the bagpipes and the organ when I walked my daughter up the aisle for her wedding. Mm -hmm.